After years and years of mere cameos in the Super Smash Bros. series, the fearsome Kremlin ruler, King K. Rule, is finally making his grand debut as a playable fighter. And he looks to be everything we hoped he would be, and more, with a moveset that references pretty much every major appearance he's had throughout the Donkey Kong series. So you know what that means, it's time to break out the old analysis machine to see what secrets his reveal trailer might be hiding. And pretty much everything about this trailer is a love letter to fans of both King K. Rule and Donkey Kong in general. The trailer, of course, opens in Donkey Kong's treehouse. Or should I say, groundhouse, because this time it appears to be on ground level. But that little discrepancy aside, it otherwise features the usual DK treehouse amenities. Like an old-fashioned TV, a tire, such as the one from the original Donkey Kong Country, but this time fashioned into a rope swing, and of course, lots and lots of bananas. Oh, and it also features a new portrait of Donkey Kong 2, but this time in his more classic form. Or is that a portrait of Cranky Kong? Uh, I really don't want to get into that. Anyways, after some truly impressive trolling antics by King DDD, it's not long until the real King K. Rule appears in all of his eye-popping glory. A detail which, by the way, is something that happened often in the original series, starting way back with the original Donkey Kong Country, or when meeting a boss in Donkey Kong Country 2, such as King K. Rule. Which is pretty fitting, although their eyeballs have never quite shattered glass before, so that's definitely something. Visually, King K. Rule appears to be a bit of an amalgamation of his various designs. Now returning to his more scaly appearance from the original games, rather than the flatter look he's inherited since Donkey Kong 64, in which he also lost his tail. But don't worry, his tail is finally back too, just a bit shorter than it used to be. Now, the blue gem that acts as a clamp to hold his cape in place is from his more recent appearances, starting with DK, King of Swing. Otherwise, he has the same bugged out eye and cape he's always had. Although that cape is looking a little worse for the wear these days, with it being torn in several places. And yes, you can see this during actual gameplay too. Perhaps a remnant of his past skirmishes with the DK crew? And that's not the only noticeable change. Because King K. Rule also appears to be much more animalistic than ever before. Instead of talking like in the more recent games, he now sounds much more like an actual crocodile. Which also fits in with DK and Diddy's more lifelike sounds throughout the Smash Bros. series. But even more surprising is that when K. Rule runs, he now does so on all four legs, as seen both at the end of the trailer and also in-game, which is something he's never done before. It has the effect of making him look less goofy and far more intimidating. And speaking of which, the opening culminates in a spectacular shot that makes K. Rule look about as menacing as Godzilla himself, and this might actually be a reference to his own similarly intimidating appearance in DK Jungle Climber, in which he pretty much became Godzilla-sized. And that menacing appearance seems pretty fitting for a character that appears to pack quite the punch. So let's go ahead and break down his moveset and try to figure out exactly how this guy is going to play. And let's start with what are almost certainly his special attacks. And you know what? Let's go in chronological order the games that each move references. Which means we're starting with a crown toss baby that comes straight from King K. Rool's very first appearance in Donkey Kong Country. Only now he tosses it with a forceful underhand as opposed to the overhanded throw of the original. And like in that game, it functions a little bit like a boomerang in that it will return to him after going out a short ways, enabling it to potentially hit the same opponent twice, once in each direction. And you gotta love the detail of him putting it back on once it returns. Now, as a projectile, naturally, the villager can pocket it, which likely means that King K. Rool won't be able to use that move again until the villager is KO'd. No wonder he goes chasing after him. As for which direction the special might be on, we'd wager it's a side special like Link's boomerang. Next up is K. Rool's Blunder Bus, which returns from Donkey Kong Country 2, and fittingly enough, he even dons a pirate hat for this unique two-step attack. Part 1 fires a cannonball dead ahead, at which point he can then use a Blunder Bus again, but this time as a vacuum to suck up anything nearby, whether it be an opponent, or even your very own cannonball if it somehow returned to you, which K. Rool will then fire at a roughly 45 degree angle, an angle which always appears to be the same based on the two clips we see it in. Once all is said and done, K. Rule instantly puts his gun away as he also removes his hat, seemingly confirming it as a single two-step attack as opposed to something more permanent. Now our guess is that this is the neutral special, since it not only matches up with most other gun-based specials like Fox or Diddy, but its vacuum function is also generally the neutral special, like with Kirby and DDD. Furthermore, you might have noticed that the cannonball actually oscillates while in the air, similar to some of his late-stage attacks in Donkey Kong Country 2, which is a pretty neat touch. And it makes us wonder if there's a chance that some other projectiles from that game might return too, like spiked cannonballs or these glowing energy things. 
Although, this is probably a long shot, seeing as how Smash Bros. Wii U actively worked to remove similar random elements. But hey, you never know. Moving on, we have K. Rool's Recovery, or his Up Special, in which he deploys the helicopter pack from his appearance as Baron K. Rulenstein in Donkey Kong Country 3. And it even deploys in the exact same fashion, first extending from his back before low propellers pop out. Neat! But this time, it's been turbocharged, as we can see a large exhaust pipe extends down his back that bellows out steam. So when activated, it instantly gives King K. Rule lift, while also being fully directional, as we can see him go forward in the reveal trailer, whereas in his gameplay trailer, he first flies straight up, before leaning back to move in that direction. So it seems versatile, but it doesn't seem particularly fast. And with King K. Rule being so big, it might make him especially vulnerable when recovering. Okay, so that's three specials down, leaving just one left. A counter, in which his belly hardens, absorbing any attack that connects, before King K. Rool automatically unleashes one of his own, by thrusting his chest forward. Now, as far as we can tell, this attack isn't based on any specific attack from any of the Donkey Kong games. But it might be a reference to the fact that K. Rool's golden belly was originally designed to be gold-plated body armor, and not intended to be his actual chest, unlike in his more recent appearances in which it appears more flesh-toned. So it's pretty neat that the armor now serves an actual purpose. And that's not the only one, because we also see K. Rool go from a sprint right into this belly flop, which means it's almost certainly his dash attack. And it seems to be pretty strong in that it completely cancels Lil Max Jolt Haymaker before sending him flying. But the drawback is he'll be left vulnerable immediately afterward as he flops helplessly to the ground. Now this move appears to be a reference to the relatively obscure Donkey Kong Land on the Game Boy, in which King K. Rool learned a new belly flop attack. Neat! Another cool reference involves K. Rool's gloved punch which is a direct homage to his boxing ring appearance in Donkey Kong 64. And this appears to be one of his smash attacks, most likely a side one, based on the sparkle that appears indicating it's a smash attack. And the reason there's two of them here is because Bowser is performing his own smash attack at the exact same time. Unfortunately, this is the only smash attack of King K. Rool shown in any of the gameplay, so we're still not sure what the other two might be. So that's it for all of his moves that explicitly reference his past appearances, but there are still a few more attacks left for us to cover, such as this drop kick that's almost certainly King K. Rool's forward aerial. Then in this scene, we see King K. Rool performing what is almost certainly a missed grab, because its pose seems to match this scene, which begins in a similar fashion. But this time, we get to see the follow through, which is almost definitely K. Rool's up throw, as he launches into the air with Mewtwo, before slamming back to the ground and then resting on his shoulders, which then sends him flying back upwards afterward. It looks pretty brutal. Now, at the very end of the trailer, there's an extra bonus scene in which we see King K. Rool downward kick DK and Diddy, burying them both at the same time. Yikes! And since we don't see him crouch before this maneuver, that means it's likely either his forward or up tilt attack. Alright, and that's all the standard attacks we've seen so far. But there's still a few more things to talk about, such as the fact that we see K. Rool crouch, as well as confirmation that he can crawl. At least when getting back up after being knocked down. Oh, and how about his stage entrance? No, not the very first gameplay scene in the trailer, but this one instead, in which K. Rool drops in and immediately starts laughing, before getting into a battle-ready stance. That other scene, though similar, appears to be just a standard jump as his pose matches up with him falling in the gameplay trailer. He then does this distinct sumo wrestler-like animation, which we're reasonably confident is actually one of his taunts. And that's not the only one the trailer reveals, because it shows off the other two as well. His second taunt has him slamming his stomach while looking rather smug, and his third has him taking bites out of thin air. Finally, we of course have to talk about King K. Rool's amazing final smash, where he zips off the helm his crocodile owl-shaped ship and aims his weapon, the Blastomatic, at DK Island before blowing it to smithereens. This is not only visually fantastic, but it's also a direct callback to the game over sequence of Donkey Kong 64, in which King K. Rool would charge up the Blastomatic as it took aim at DK Isle. Unfortunately, that's where the cutscene ended. So, Smash Bros. Ultimate is finally delivering the payoff that we've been waiting nearly 20 years for. Oh yeah! Moving beyond his moveset, the official Smash Bros. website also reveals two alternate colors for King K. Rule, and as you might have guessed, there are references too, but this time to other members of the Kremlin crew. The blue one is evocative of Crusha from the original game, and the pink one looks like any number of enemies from Donkey Kong Country 3, such as Skidda. Now, unfortunately, one thing that King K. Rule doesn't seem to have is his own stage but that didn't stop the trailer from cleverly subbing in similar locations. And I don't just mean existing DK stages like Jungle Falls or Jungle Japes. The boxing ring here, for instance, is an obvious reference to the setting of the final boss in Donkey Kong 64. And then the Power Chip stage, which is also seen in the character trailer, is way too perfect a fit given the power theme of Donkey Kong Country 2. 
and also the fact that an amazing new remix of Gangplank Galleon plays throughout the trailer. And finally, the Wrecking Crew stage here might be a reference to the setting of the final boss in Donkey Kong Land, which took place in Big Ape City. AKA New Donk City. But that's just a theory. A game explained theory. Alright, we're just about done here, but there's still one final thing I wanted to point out. At the end of the trailer, when King K. Rool and Donkey Kong and Diddy all launched toward each other, you might have noticed that not only does King K. Rool have his boxing gloves on, but so does Donkey Kong. And they're even branded with his initials which is a direct reference to the boxing gloves that he's worn before, such as in Mario Superstar Baseball and Punch-Out on Nintendo Wii. Smashing! And with that, we're finally done covering everything we could dig up on King K. Rool and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. But make sure to let us know if we missed anything by posting in the comments below. And with that, thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for tons more on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and all things Nintendo.